Yep, yep. Even with the black and white, I'm playing hide and seek behind the can. I got a little crazy. Anyway, right beside me. Wait a minute, which side am I going to put it on? Let's go this way. There's more space because I'm already sitting way over here. Right beside me is the picture for this PICC collaboration. It's number 48 in the collaboration lineup. And it's the fifth time, five times, that the ever gracious Angie and I have worked together. Too much fun. Now this is one of the most incredible images I've ever seen. And when you see it in color, I think you'll understand better what inspired me to play ready to go just follow the fan hello yes this is the piece after the intro Yes, that's what this is. But I have to remember that because I have to put the intro in black and white. I hope I did that. I won't know until after I start uh, doing the edits. Anyway, this is another one of Miss Angie 4F Beauty's picture-inspired collaborations. And they are fun. This is my fifth time collabing up with Angie over this. And I love these pictures. Some of the pictures have been absolutely bare, like the snow. And you had the little bit of color from the rocks and the sky and all the little blue shadows. That was interesting. Now, the picture we have today is another one that is seriously interesting. This creature is not a creature. It's a fruit. No, really. It's a fruit. Technically, if you think about it, it's a pine cone. Even though it's a fruit with pulp. The seeds are floating around in the pulp. The seeds are in that yellow and orange part. This is from a tropical pine tree that's called the screw pine, the tree, Tahitian, Tahiti, I can't talk today, Tahitian screw pine, thatched screw pine, and a couple other things. It's very big in Southeast Asian cooking and in Hawaii a lot of times you'll see some of these the pieces if you see the little pieces to the side a lot of times you'll see pieces from this thing in a lay and they're kind of tough even though they do make kind of a custard fruit out of it um, fruit custard out of it I'll get the words in the right order later how's that Anyway, gorgeous thing. Absolutely gorgeous thing. It gets used in a lot of cooking in um, Pacific Range and in a small part of Australia. And don't be alarmed. My dogs might go off. The puppies are outside. And, oh. Uh... Hello, peeps. Let me tell you, the dogs not only went off, they stayed going off. So, I'm trying to do this as a voiceover. We will see how this goes. Yes, I will still be flapping my gums in the pictures. How 
whatever the words I'm saying are not going to match exactly. Aren't you thrilled? If you can read lips, good luck to you on that. Anyway, started off with my white base on and was looking at that delightful piece of fruit called the Hall of Fruit and trying to decide exactly how I was going to do the eyeshadow. I decided to look for a white to start with on the inner corner of the eye so that I captured that core that's in the picture. Now, the picture has a little bit of very tiny little bit of fresh green where the um where the pieces have been torn off the pieces are called keys and they all literally just lock together almost like pine cones do and i just started crawling through all of my makeup while i was trying to get set up for this and I was debating between a cream shade and a white shade. I decided, ended up deciding to go for the white and start there and then keep building as we went along. I mean, the picture is fascinating. Now, remember, with these pictures and this challenge, we can only use the colors that are in the picture. So there's the white center, the little bit of yellow and orange in keys, and then the green on the far end of it. But there's also a little bit of beige on the wall and the black backdrop and the blue table. There are options. You can play with it. There's plenty of options. You can use any color in the picture. You don't have to use all of them, but you can't bring anything else in. It has to be a color that's in the picture, or at least as close as you can see it, because you've got variations in the picture, how it's presented on your computer equipment, and what you actually see compared to what the other person in the challenge sees. So this is where I am starting off with my white and trying to convince people that it's a good idea. Don't mind me. Anyway, the dogs went absolutely nuts because the puppies were outside and the older dogs were not. And I'm just coating most of the inside surface of the lids with the white. There will be some adjustments later. But I, I, I've got lots of cream colors. The stark white is a little bit harder to get a hold of in my collection. Luckily though, I got it. And there goes the other eye. Now there were a couple of times that I had to think about it for a minute before I put something else on, but you'll be able to see that. I absolutely love doing this series. Angie is so much fun to work with, and she's just a hoot if you're talking to her in general. Um, I am absolutely amazed at her ability to keep other people happy and laughing when I know what kind of she's in. And it's amazing. It really is. It's 
we've been talking long enough now that we've gotten to the point where occasionally we sign off with each other as sis. So, you know, we check in on each other and that kind of thing. And she's not the only amazing person I have met since I started this. Now, in August, it will have been two years that I have been on the platform. And I've enjoyed the heck out of it. Not, I don't have that many followers. I'm not worried about the followers. I'm having a blast. And I intend to keep doing it. This is where I'm putting that lot, very, very, very light green from one of the palettes. A little bit over the, uh, over the white to kind of tone it a little because of the little green background to the to the core and showing off that my little crocheted patches that I make do really really well to take pigment off of brushes and I think they do a great job I like my home moods and my introduction to J. Kissa and Elf Collaboration Palette. Now, that palette looked like it was going to be a good option for doing this. It really did. There's so many wonderful colors. The problem is I had not used it yet. And we will see that there were a few issues. I'm starting off with the palest yellow because if you look at the picture there is a pale yellow end where the key connects to the core and then the orange starts to pick up pretty fast it was such a such a fascinating picture. It's having entirely too much fun. And doing the odd stripes was fun. I wasn't entirely sure where this was going to go. But let me tell you, I'm right proud of the way it comes out in the end. You'll just have to wait. Um, I just fiddled and played and played and fiddled. And yeah, it was originally as long as most of my normal ones. I've actually speeded this up just a tad for the moving images. And I'm trying to keep up with doing a reasonable running commentary. Now, as much as I love working with Angie, there are some other people I am eventually going to like stick my little paw out and see if I can snag to also do collaborations. Now, I've been in some of the big group collaborations, like when we were saluting Paulina after she got her palette and it was her birthday, da da da. And collab, yeah, collaboration was born, and we, it was huge. I think there was like sixty people that were collaborating on that one, and some of those people have gone on to do other um, large co collaborations. I didn't always get in on them because I'm a college student as well as being a wife and a grandma and a mom and yeah I'm 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 a tad busy. I mean I know people who work full time are busy as heck. And this is basically what I do for a hobby doing this on um, YouTube. The rest of my day is family crises or kissing boo-boos 
for doing homework. <laughs> I do a lot of homework. And some of it, since I'm starting to get into some of the more advanced classes, can be a little energy depleting and a bit daunting. So, yeah, it kind of cuts down on the time that I have available to be on the screen. So, I haven't done nearly the collaborations I want to do. Um, I'm getting there. Okay, I have moved on to the darker yellows and the light oranges and Eventually, we'll get to a dark orange. And then there's one that's kind of, of more ready that, that I stuck on the orange because some of the keys have a slight red tint to it as well as the orange. So I was doing my best to cover the colors. All I could think of the whole time I was working on this was just, it's playing. I have no idea what I'm doing. It's picking up paints and slapping them on a big piece of paper while you're in, you know, a used piece of clothing to work, to use as a smock while the teacher gave you some more finger paints. Just play. Now, one thing that's going with going on with Angie that just thrills me no end, I love her voice. It is so soothing. I can sometimes just put on Cotton Pick and Train. Yeah, you too. Um, I can put on one of her vids, even ones that I've seen repeatedly. And... I can calm myself down while listening to her voice. Now, I'm in school for creative writing and English, even though some days I can't talk. But the creative writing side, I've been writing stories literally for years. Some of them have been small publisher published but it's not in book form. And I don't know that anyone currently has any of the fan magazines that my stories were published in. But I'm working on one now that I'm hoping to have finished by the time I graduate, which I now have all of the classes I have left on the schedule. I can look at the at my entire lineup of classes I have left, which is kind of scary that they now all fit on the page. It's not that it, it's not that close to being over, but it, it's it's a point where you look at it and go, there's no more to wait for later to fill out. Ay, yay, yay. Anyway, the novel that I am working on, Angie has read part of it and has discussed with me the idea of her doing the voice work for the book as an audiobook. And we have also talked once in a while a brief minute about maybe getting a Patreon um, set up so that as I complete sections of the book, Angie can read off those sections for those of you who are willing to cough up a couple bucks for the privilege of hearing the book in process. Now, my books are definitely science fiction and fantasy slammed together with a sledgehammer. 
it's not for everybody. It really isn't. The other thing is I can't really ask Angie to do the reading on YouTube because there are some adult themes in the story which precludes us from putting it directly onto YouTube. They, they get picky that way. At this point, all I'm doing is, is fiddling and making sure I don't lose the yellows and the oranges in amongst themselves while trying to build up the color and blend the edges so it's not quite so stark a break between them. It's like, yeah, this is going to be editorial, but let, let's not go for sharp angles. I had entirely too much fun doing this. And I'm just yakking away. Yeah, I know, I'm still yakking away. But you have no idea what was in the original thing besides yelling at the dogs to tell them to hush. Because, literally, as soon as I'd start to say something, and you will see me occasionally in the film, look up and get, look like I'm getting ready to throw things. I'm, I'm promising the dogs that I'm going to take their treats and give them to the other dogs. And, you know, not that the dogs actually understand all of that, but they could tell I was not amused and not pleased and, They'd settle for about three seconds, and then one of the puppies would bark at something outside. So these older dogs would jump up and go, We have to save the puppies! Bark, 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 bark. And I'm going, Guys, you're smaller than the puppies. And it's like, yeah, smaller than the puppies. The necklace I'm currently wearing is one that I designed and put together. I may show some of that may show some of that stuff when I do some wire wrap. I've got a huge piece of ametrine that I'm going to wire wrap. Yes, I know. That has nothing to do with the picture or what I'm doing on my face, but then again, right now I'm not doing anything on my face. <laughs> I'm just flapping my mouth. A lot. And apparently making grand pronouncements about things that are probably not worth discussing any other time. Oh, mercy. I've, I've, I've done 18 minutes and change, and there's still time to go. Ha. Anyway, it hopefully it's not going to end up being one of my forever longer than anyone ought to ever have to put up with, but could happen. Now, the J. Kissa palette, oh, I wanted that thing so bad because it's so pretty. And it's about rescuing doggies and, and that kind of thing. And I was just all excited. And by the time I got pretty close to where I was ready to jump off and finish the face and all that stuff, there was a problem because the orange and green started mixing and it just went muddy, and I kept losing the yellow, and the orange was weird. It didn't hold its place, and, you know, you start to blend it after piling it on. You start blending, and it just kind of goes poof and disappears. I was so disappointed. I really wanted this to be the cat's pajamas, but you know, and I, I watched other people's videos on this palette. And I'm going, no, 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 no. Because they started talking about 
the same kind of issues, powdery and hard to build up, and then it blends away. And I'm going, no, 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 I must redeem it. And yeah, it didn't. Could not redeem. It, it just, it looked bad. Which really upset me because I was having fun with this look. I was going for broke. And I got to tell you, it looks like a much better green on the camera than it ended up looking on my eyes. It really turned kind of a muddy brown. And you see, I'm not really mixing it with the orange. I'm kind of going along the edge of the orange. It should not have gone quite so mucky. I tried. I tried. And then I tried some more. One of the things that I do is there's a really pretty pale green in one of my palettes. If you are looking at the um, at the picture, there are some points of very pale green here and there on the keys. Again, that's the fruit, and the keys. You know, you you have to look for it. It's kind of like at the transition point between orange and the darker green there's like these little fine points of a slightly paler green so me being me i took advantage of what i was seeing on my monitor and jumped up with that pale green and stuck that in a couple of places now, see i keep having to put it back on I put that orange on repeatedly. Oh yes, and the shaking, that was the dogs. There go the dogs again, round about my table. Now, my camera normally sits up on a little flexible arm that's attached to a clamp that is also attached to my ring light, which I'm using in a white lined box as a bounce light. I've got a couple of places where I've um, shown the box, shown what we set up, and took good pictures of it. And I got the idea of watching Abby Williamson. She, being a professional photographer, knows things. And she does production work at a videography studio. So she knows some things. And she was talking about stuff and talking about how she kind of jury-rigged her lights based on an older light that she had and a diffuser cover from a box light that she had at one point and didn't anymore. And so her studio in her home is kind of jury-rigged together because she doesn't have a lot of space. She's in a small apartment with her sister. So you know, she's got to do things with that tight space in mind. So I'm doing the same kind of thing. My little quote-unquote studio is set up in my bedroom because it's the only place I can put this stuff together and not have to immediately take it down and hide the makeup and stuff once I'm finished to keep my grandson out 
of it. He's nine years old, developmentally delayed, and he thinks it's the most fun in the world to dismantle Granny's makeup. We have to put some on while we're doing the dismantling, but yes, you must take everything apart, open all the palettes, stick all the fingers in all the palettes, maybe even the toes if we are naked feeted. I, I love the kid, but some days it's hard to keep up. He just moves too fast for most of us to catch anytime soon. This is one of those cases where you have to look at the child and say, good thing you're cute. Because some of the things he has done, not even maliciously, just he thought something was pretty. And we didn't manage to have it up high enough because he's growing like a bean pole. We, it was up high enough two weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> And the next thing we know, he's got something fragile and it's busted and people are going, but why didn't you put it up higher? It's like it was high enough two weeks ago. We didn't measure him today, okay? <laughs> so, yeah. Granny gets chased around and run around. And this is my fun time putting paints all over me. Yes, for anyone who's wondering, that crease in the top of my head had nothing to do with the fall. That's just where my CPAP face harness piece goes across the top of my head. Last video, there was a little more explanation about all the creases that the face harness leaves when you're having to use a CPAP to breathe at night. Now, at this point, I'm getting pretty close to being ready to jump off and finish everything. I'm just kind of fiddling. I'm not sure if you can see that very sheer pale green that I worked in with the white on the inner third of the eyelid. But see how dark and kind of muddy looking that green got at the outside edges in the outer V? It just muddied up something awful and I was I was just certain it was going to finish ruining everything. So you know we will see. Now that itty bitty brush that I'm playing with is putting in that light green in a couple of places. Just kind of tapping right along the edge of the dark Now, some of these palettes that I'm using are things that I got from Shop Hush before they went under. There's Bad Habit palettes and Face Candy palettes and that sort of thing. The Pale Green came out of the Light Speed from Face Candy. And no. Amazonian is the face candy one that had all the oranges that I snuck into. The light one from Bad Habits is the Amazonian. Anyway, I was playing. And I get even more fanciful about playing after the I know, isn't that scary? Every time I go to play, people start getting worried. Because if I'm, I was so wound up, a 
about the way things have been today that I probably just went ham because I could. <coughs> I actually went and looked at a car today. <coughs> Excuse me. It's like the current car that I have is no longer reliable. And the AC don't work. And it's hot weather. I want my AC. So we started looking at all the various options. And then there's this guy right down the street who's got this, okay, it's not new. Thank goodness I can't afford a new car. But it's a 2004. You turn it on, the engine purrs like a happy kitten. And it drives smooth, it drives quiet. The current car that we have is a Nissan Altima. This thing has a hum in it when the wheels are running on the asphalt that sounds like the big drone on the bagpipes. And it's just that one note the whole time. We get that road noise and engine noise into the cabin constantly. And then have the nerve to let its air conditioner die. Yeah, no. No, that was not working for me. And then other things started kind of like just stopping. I had the windshield washer just stop. And I'm going, okay, that's not good. We live in a dusty area. I could really use a wash now and again. And just other things just started going wrong. And we did probably, yeah, it was over $700 worth of maintenance and investigative work on the car and it it still wasn't enough there was something else going on and then it started just getting too warm didn't matter if you were sitting in like a traffic line or if you were driving and it wasn't the water or the oil because the thermostats never went off. It just got too hot somewhere and would shut off. Didn't care where you were. You could be in the middle of the highway, in the middle of a lane change, and it'd get persnickety and just shut down. We haven't, been, hasn't, haven't had an accident because of it, but I don't want to, to wait for an accident, you know? I, I, I'm kind of allergic to accidents. Anyway, it looks like I'm getting ready to go boofity and run away and go do all the rest of the stuff, which means I can get off this silly microphone and get ready to put the rest of the film together. Guess what? It's time for me to run away. I'm back. Yes, I'm playing hide-and-seek. Isn't that special? Now, if you're not playing with your makeup, if you're not having fun, if you're not just putting colors wherever and shapes wherever, for the pure heck of it, what are you doing with your makeup?
would I wear this to the grocery? Knowing me, possibly. Definitely to other things. Go play. See what you come up with looking at that picture. Let us know if you come up with something looking at that picture. Play. We got enough stuff going on that we don't need to not be able to go out and play. Go play. Ah, oh, jeez. Wouldn't you know, I meant to put these on. Be good. <laughs>